Hi, in this video we're looking at Lewis structures. Now Lewis dot diagrams are like the first phase to this where we just learned how to do Lewis dot diagrams for elements. A Lewis dot diagram is just dots representing valence electrons of an element arranged around its element symbol. And the importance of doing a Lewis dot diagram is so that eventually you can start to fit some of these elements together uh, as atoms in molecules. And so Lewis structures are more uh, representations of what a molecule would look like. Now the Lewis structure is important because it tells us roughly the shape of the molecule. Uh, and so let me just start with a basic example. HCl is hydrochloric acid or hydrogen chloride. Um, you see that there are two electrons here, one from hydrogen and one from chlorine. These make up a covalent bond and so we would call those bonded pair electrons. Now these remaining six electrons around chlorine are not part of a bond. And so we'd call them lone pair electrons. They're a pair of electrons that are all alone. They're not part of a bond, and so we call them lone pair electrons. Now, one thing to know, this bond here, uh, oftentimes when we're writing Lewis or drawing Lewis structures, we would replace with just a line to represent that bond. Uh, these make the drawings faster, um, but the one thing to know is that one line represents two electron dots. They're just a bonded pair of electrons. Um, now this, as I mentioned, can make things faster and you can more clearly see what's going on. Uh, here's an example, CH3F. Um, if I just replace all of the bonded pairs with lines, I really only end up with six dots. And that's one thing that you have to make sure you do when you do these. Don't get rid of those lone pair electrons. They affect the shape of the molecule and that's why they're important. So uh, let me show you a different example. Oxygen is one of our seven diatomic elements. Um, and so oxygen can exist just on its own. It has to be buddied up with another neighboring oxygen atom. And so here's how it does that. First, let's just start with the idea that each of these oxygen atoms have six valence electrons. When I put them together, forming a covalent bond, they each now have seven valence electrons because they're able to claim those two electrons each as their own. They're sharing that pair of electrons. Seven electrons is better, but not eight. And so we need to... Uh, keep bonding until we have eight valence electrons. Well, one thing you might notice is that right down here, there are two electrons that are off on their own. And so those two electrons are actually going to form a second bond. Now this is two bonds kind of rolled into one. And we would write that not just with one line, but we draw in two lines. This is called a double bond. Double bonds are two pairs of electrons shared between nonmetals. Now, uh, this is a lot of negativity all in one area here. So really with uh, a situation like this, what ends up happening is these electrons, those lone pair electrons kind of spread out at 120 degree angles. Um, not important that you know this for my class. This class, as long as you have those lone pairs represented, you'll be in good shape. But that's what actually happens. Let me show you another example with nitrogen, N2. It's another one of those diatomic elements. Each nitrogen starts with five valence electrons, and so if I put them together, they each now have six. I'd wanna make another bond, seven, and another bond, eight, and that's called a triple bond. That's three pairs of electrons shared between nonmetals. Now, triple bonds and double bonds are not as strong as single bonds. Because there's all that negative electron activity mashed in one spot, it's gonna be relatively easy to break that up. But that is what's happening. So let me show you an example where we kind of go back to the beginning. Let's do a basic example of drawing a Lewis structure for something like SiCl4. Now this is a stepwise process, so follow the steps with me and then I'm gonna show you a couple examples using the exact same steps. Step one is to add up all of the valence electrons. So here we are with SiCl4. Uh, Si is in group 14. So that means Si has four valence electrons. Chlorine has seven, and there are four chlorines. Now in your mind, once you get better at these, you can probably just multiply seven by four for all the chlorines there and then add four to it, but you end up with 32 electrons there total, okay? The next step, step two, is to pick a central atom and draw single bonds in. So here I go. Uh, by the way, the way to pick a central atom is really just to find whichever element's gonna wanna form the most bonds. 
Uh, in this case, it's going to be silicon, um, and that's because it has four valence electrons. Man, it wants to form four single bonds or some combination to get it its eight valence electrons. So I picked my central atom, draw the uh, single bonds in, um, I'm going to start by picking Si as the central atom. I'm going to draw in my four chlorines. Okay, then step two says subtract the electrons you just placed into bonds from the total. So remember, my total amount of electrons was 32. I just placed these bonds here, this one, this one, this one, and this one. Now each of those lines represents two valence electrons. And if I have four bonds, that's eight valence electrons that I just drew in. So I'm gonna subtract that away from 32 electrons, which is the amount that uh, I need to place into this structure. And that leaves me with 24 electrons left. Now step four says to add electrons to outside atoms until each has its desired amount. So that means I'm gonna start with every atom except for my central atom and start adding electron dots, that's lone pairs, to them until they have their desired amount. Now chlorine, which there are four chlorines in this molecule, wants a total of eight valence electrons. And if you pick any one of these chlorines right now and see how many electrons it has around it, uh, they only have two. And that's the two that's, that's contained in, for example, this chlorine. It only has two electrons in this bond here. So it's a good idea for us to start to put uh, lone pairs around these chlorines. I need to place 24. Now there are four chlorines on this and each of them want six more. So there's my 24 right there. I'll show you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. Okay. So I've just placed all of my 24 electrons and I'm left over with no more electrons. Now my final check, is everybody happy? Uh, silicon is certainly happy. Silicon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons in those bonds around it. And then each of the chlorines are, have the exact same situation going on. They have three lone pairs and a bonded pair, which is exactly what it wants. So all the chlorines are happy. And that means my molecule, my Lewis structure for this molecule is done. So let me show you another example. This one says draw a Lewis structure for SCL2. Okay, well my first step, again, I'm following the exact same steps. Uh, my first step is to add up the valence electrons. So sulfur has six valence electrons, and then each of these chlorines have seven valence electrons. Seven. Uh, six plus seven is 13, plus seven again is 20. So I have 20 valence electrons I have to place in here. My next step is to pick a central atom. In this case, sulfur is the central atom because it has six valence electrons. It's gonna to wanna to gain two electrons and it does that from each of those chlorines. That's why there are two chlorines there. So I'm gonna have S right in the center here, Cl and Cl. Now if you're thinking, hey, how did you know to put the Cl on the right and on the bottom? It doesn't matter, you can put them wherever. Um, so I just placed two bonds in here that represents four electrons. Let me tr subtract away four electrons there. 20 minus four is 16. So that means I have 16 electrons left to place. Now I'm gonna start by placing them around the outside atoms. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Chlorine now has eight, so chlorine is happy. I can put a little check mark next to chlorine. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now this chlorine has 8. And now I've just placed 12. So remember my last step, sorry, there's lots of negative signs in here. Try to see that E negative as just the word electron. 16 minus 12 is 4. So I've got four electrons left to place, and this is where I'm at step four, which says add electrons. Sorry, I'm at step five, which says if needed, assign leftover electrons to the central atom. In this case, we're moving to our final step, which is step five. Um, I do have electrons left over. There are four of them. In the last example, I didn't have any, so that's why I didn't have to go to step five. But in this one, I do. And so what this is saying is we want to assign leftover electrons to the central atom. Well, I have four electrons left over, and if you look at sulfur, it only has four electrons to begin with. So it's gonna to want to take these final four dots, and now sulfur is happy too. 
Now, the only exception to this, and this is what you really have to look out for, is hydrogen. Hydrogen, don't forget, only wants two electrons. It doesn't want eight. So you're never going to see a hydrogen atom as part of a Lewis structure that's going to have a, a lone pair on it. Let me give you an example, actually, where we have hydrogen. Uh, this next one here says, draw a Lewis structure for CH2O. So here I go. Start by adding up the valence electrons. Carbon's got four. Hydrogen has one, but there are two of them. So two times one. And then oxygen has six. So four plus two plus six, that's 12. 12 electrons here. Pick a central atom. I'll give you a hint. If carbon is ever in your structure, oh buddy, it's going to be your central atom. Carbon wants to form probably four bonds because it only has four valence electrons. It's going to want to get four more to get up to eight. So carbon is going to be in the center of this one. Now I happen to know what this one looks like. So I'm going to kind of uh, show you. C goes there. O goes here. And then H on either side. To be honest with you, this could look different. So if you're thinking, man, I just don't know where to put these atoms around the central atom, it doesn't matter. Uh, when you get better at these, you'll start to realize what these things are going to look like. But for now, we're just trying to get down what a Lewis structure is. So, all right, let's take some inventory here. I just placed electrons. I placed three bonds, which represents six electrons. So I'm going to subtract six electrons from this. So that's leaving me with six electrons left to place. Okay, now uh, this is the point where I start to add valence electrons to outside atoms. But again, be careful. I've got two hydrogens in this. They're already all set. If you look at this hydrogen here, it's got two electrons because of that shared bond with carbon there. Same thing with this hydrogen over here. And so those ones are not going to get any more electrons. Uh, they have the electron configuration of helium now, so they're happy. Um, so let me place these six electrons around oxygen. Doesn't that make oxygen happy? Yay. But the problem is carbon's not happy. Look closely. Carbon only has six electrons here. So this is where we go to the final piece of step five, which again, I'll pop this up again. It says, uh, if all atoms do not have full valence shells, and in this scenario, carbon doesn't, make multiple bonds until they do. Well, in this case, the only atom that we can make a multiple bond with is oxygen. The hydrogens are all set with just one single bond. They have no motivation to make a double bond. But check out what I can do with oxygen here. If I take these two electrons here and just put them in the bond with carbon, oxygen is still happy. And carbon, oh, that didn't quite erase. Let me erase the whole thing there. There we go. And then carbon has eight. Uh, electrons. So carbon is happy now too. So this is the structure then for CH2O. Okay. Now, uh, Lewis structures take practice. They take time and looking at lots of examples is going to help you. So there's lots of example molecules out on the internet. There's lots in practice sheets that I give you in our class. Um, and I've got a ton too. So we can do, we can do a bunch together if you come in and uh, find me if you need some extra help. Lewis structures are helpful for the next piece. Uh, next, we're talking about the shape of molecules, which is called Vesper theory. And then after that, we're talking about molecule polarity. Yeah, a bond can be polar or nonpolar, but so can a molecule overall. So knowing how to draw molecules out, visualizing them in your head, and then also on paper, that's gonna help you as we move forward. Thank you.